Today I want to share with you the latest chapter in my life as the Marshal of Dodge City. In this first part of our story, I face not just the ruthless killers that plague our town, but an even greater enemy, my own mind. Each day, the weight of my badge feels heavier, not just because of the outlaws I bring to justice, but because of the constant mental battle I fight. Every decision I make, every time I draw my gun, will my resolve be enough to maintain order, or will the shadows within me finally take their toll? So make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay updated with all our gripping stories. And don't miss part two, where the stakes get even higher and my mental struggle becomes all too real. Stick around, partners, because the Wild West never sleeps and neither does my fight for peace and sanity. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. Transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful. And a little lonely. <laughs> Oh, hello, Chester. Oh, come on here, Doc. Ah, where's Matt? He ain't here. See, where have you two been the last couple of days? I haven't seen either one of them. Well, I just got back from Hayes City. Mr. Dillon sent me there to fetch some government papers. And you know what? I took the Santa Fe both ways, You Doc. did? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that beats riding. Uh, uh, but where's Matt, you say? He left a note, but he didn't say exactly where he was at. Well, you mean he's out of town? That's what the note said. It seems somebody told him where he could find Jack Brand. Jack Brand? Oh, what's he doing around here? I don't want to guess Missouri got too rough for him. Why don't they handle their own outlaws instead of chasing him into Kansas for Matt to catch? And Mr. Dillon says Brand's got three of his gang with him. You mean Matt's gone out alone after four men? Well, if I knew where he was, I'd go help him, Doc. Oh, well, there's nothing you can do about it, Chester. Yes. You worried me, though. That last hold up the gang pulled, they say four men got shot down. Well, maybe they've quit. Maybe that's why they came to Kansas. So when you ever hear of a bunch of outlaws quitting? No, yes, no. Yes, I was just talking to myself, just. Yes, sir. Oh. Yes, sir. Well, that's what you don't knock. Yeah. Uh, where is he? There he is, sitting on that wagon. Oh, yes. Well, who's that with him? I'm probably giving him a ride, I guess. Hello, Mr. Dillon. Hello, Chester. Doc. Hey, you lose your horse, Matt? We left our horses out at Bowers Ranch and borrowed this wagon. One of his riders will bring him in tomorrow. Who's this with you, Mr. Dillon? You've seen his picture, Chester. Oh, my goodness. It's Jack Brand. Let's get on, Brand. You first. For sure. How come you let him drive the wagon, Mr. Dillon? To keep his hand full, Chester. Here, take my shotgun and lock him up. Yes, sir. Where's the others? I thought he had three men with him. Well, tell him, Marshal. Tell him where they are. They're in the wagon, Chester. Under that canvas. Well, are they all dead, man? Uh, all three of them? They're all dead, Doc. Bloodiest marshal I ever saw. It's just a wagon load of meat to him. That's enough, Brad. It ain't hardly enough. I never seen such killing. What happened, Mr. Dillon? It doesn't matter. They put up a fight and I had to take him. Well, I'll tell him what happened. Your lawman here hid himself in the grass and just waited for us to come out of that cabin. 
and then he yelled, so naturally we headed for cover. Who wouldn't? He just laid there, and he cut loose of the shotgun. Tore up two of the boys that way. Then he stood up, and he cut down Hank Smith with a six-shooter. How come you got out of it, Brain? I jumped back in the cabin, then I give up. We weren't putting up a fight. The spook was yelling like that. Make any man jump. Oh, I suppose you're trying to say that you wouldn't have shot. We tried to shoot him. Who wouldn't? Any man's got a right to defend himself. Oh, well, I never heard him resisting arrest called self-defense. I never heard of no marshal shooting down everybody on the landscape. Lock him up, Chester. Get going, Brand. Well, if you actually think he was killing hogs, not men, shut up. <laughs> See, how come you brought the bodies back, man? Why didn't you just bury him out there? I wanted more witnesses than me to identify him, Doc. Might save trouble when Brand goes to trial. See, you were mighty lucky taking four outlaws that way, man. Yeah. yeah and you kill three out of... Oh, See, wait till people around here hear about this. Brand's right, Doc. It's a lot of killing. An awful lot. Oh, no, you don't. You don't get to thinking about it too much, no, man. It's your job, you did it. So it's over. It's over. Wait till tomorrow or the next day there'll be somebody else. There's always another man to kill. Oh, no, that's not the way to look at it, man. I, I've never heard of you shooting anybody you didn't have to. No, I never did. But sometimes that doesn't help much. So you look tired, man. Well, I haven't slept since I rode out of here two days ago. Well, now you get some rest, and you'll feel better. Sure. Old snug in jail, what you doing? He don't like it much, but I told him not to try kicking his way out, that I'd be sleeping in the office. We'll both be sleeping in the office, Chester. I'm too tired to walk to my room. Uh, take care of this wagon. Then what's in it, will you? Mm-mm. You and Doc can identify those men. We'll write it out on paper in the morning. All right, Chief. Uh, I'll be coming to bed about midnight, but I'll be real quiet. Nothing could wake me, Chester. Not tonight. Gosh, Doc, you sure I shouldn't wake him up and tell him? It can wait until morning, Chester. Matt's too tired to do anything about it tonight. Well, I guess you're right. Of course I am. Yeah. Okay. Good night, Chester. Good night, Doc. Don't go from a... Uh, what? Don't throw it. I tried to leave the gun alone. You no. killing? No. Don't make me kill you. Don't make me kill another man. Mr. Dillon, No, I've are... spilled enough blood. I don't want to kill you. No. Oh, Mr. Dillon, wait. No. He isn't with me, Mr. Dillon. It's just that ain't nobody what? here. What? You, you, you were asleep. You, you, you've been dreaming. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. I like to land. No, 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 no. It's all right, Chester. My gracious, I, I come in and I heard you talking and I, I thought somebody was here. That moonlight ain't too bright. I couldn't see good at first. Sure. My, I had to yell at you a couple of times before I woke up. You was dreaming you was in a fight, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what I was dreaming. Nightmares like that there. They're just terrible, ain't they? There's a bottle in the desk drawer over there. Chester, get it for me, will you? Yes, I know where it is. I used to have nightmares sometimes when I was a boy, but I don't get them much no more. There it is, Mr. Dunn. A good step in can do you good. Uh, thanks, Chester. <coughs> oh, what time is it? A little past midnight. Jack Brand awake? 
No, he'd be bellering if he was. But, Mr. Dillon, now that you're awake, there's something I ought to tell you. Oh, what? Well, me and Doc was having a drink over at the Alfreganza, and a fella come in there and started talking real loud. Talking about what? Well, sir, mostly about how he's going to tree dodge and how he's going to tell you, too. Oh? He says he's a friend of Jack Brennan's, and he's heard about how you caught him and all. What's his name? Stanger. Joe Stanger. Yeah, I know him. Well, you think he'll cause trouble? Probably. And I'm not going to worry about him tonight. Yeah. So that's what me and Doc figured. He won't try nothing tonight. All the same, keep your gun handy, Chester. Now oh, let's try to get some sleep. Oh, go shut him up, Chester. It's hardly dawn. Sir, I'm going to throw a bucket of water on him. Oh, shut up, Brand. I'm coming. Come out there. Cut it yelling, Brand. What's who now? One over here. Unlock this cage. What? The gun on you, Ed. You see it? Where did you get that gun? And that's the bar over here, I'd see it. These ain't over there. They're hanging on the wall all down here. On. Well, take your old sweet pat about it. Drop it, Brand. What? <laughs> oh. You're not hurt. I hit that gun. I got the keys, Mr. Dillon. I'll get his gun out of there. All right, go ahead. Stand back, Brian. You like to bust my hand. You're lucky. Look, you didn't kill me, I suppose. Just like you kill everybody. Shut up. I got it, Mr. Dillon. Good anyway. Not now. Where'd you get that gun, Brian? I made it, Mark. Don't be smart. Oh, Wait a minute. Joe Stanger brought it to you. He tossed it to you right through those bars on the window. I didn't know Stanger was in town. Didn't you? Just to get some boards and nail them over the window so nothing can get through it. I'll fix it, Mr. Neal. Oh, wait a minute, Marshal. That's the only window in here. You can't board it up. You'll get enough air. No, but it'll be dark. I don't like it dark. Don't you? When you got it fixed, we'll go to breakfast, Chester. It won't take long, Mr. Dillon. Why don't secrets make good cowboys? Because they can't keep a lid on anything. Hey there, partners. Welcome back to the wild ride that is Gunsmoke. If you thought the first part was intense, hold on to your hats because part two takes the drama and danger to a whole new level. In the last half of the episode, the tension in Dodge City escalates as notorious outlaw Joe Stanger returns as I grapple with my decision to leave, the bloodshed continues, and the weight of responsibility pulls me back into the fray. Can I find the strength to confront Stanger and restore peace, or will Dodge City fall to chaos in my absence? Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a moment of the action. Stay tuned, because the showdown in Part 2 is one you won't want to miss. Well, it's been some time since I've been out on the plaza this early in the morning, Mr. Dillon. Oh, weren't you up gambling all night last Saturday, Chester? Oh, well, that's different. Oh, uh how? -huh. Well, I've been asleep all night this time. Things look different when you had a good night's sleep. Yeah, they sure do. You didn't have no more nightmares last night, did you? No, but I didn't sleep well. You you ought to take some time off. Go out and buffalo roots or something. Yeah, maybe you ought to take a lot of time off. Wait a minute, just... What? That's Joe Stanger coming there. And by golly, it is. What's he doing up so early? Maybe he wants to find out why Jack Brand hasn't shot his way out of jail yet. Well, you won't throw him no more guns. Not the way I got that place boy in up there. Get out of the way, Chester. Yes, sir. Mr. 
morning, Marshal. You're up early, Stenger. Train leaves for Abilene in about an hour. Go to Abilene? I'll be back next week. Jack Brand will still be in jail. I heard you caught him. Good friend of yours, isn't he? Sure. But I ain't part of his gang. I never was. Yeah, I know. Of course, there ain't much gang left now. No. You're a pretty rough man, Marsh. And I have to be. Don't it ever bother you? Killing people the way you do? Stanger, I shot a gun out of Jack Bryan's hand this morning. You come by the office later and I'll give it back to you. Now, well, what would I want of a smashed up six shoot? It's yours, isn't it? I'm wearing mine. I'll throw you in jail, too. What for? To get you out of sight, if nothing else. I wouldn't go to jail, Marshal. Not without a fight, I wouldn't. I ain't afraid of you. You want to try it? Go ahead. Go ahead, draw. No. What's the matter, Marshal? I thought you liked killing men. What's holding you back? And they have to fight me sooner or later. Get out of here, Stenger. Go get on your train. <laughs> Wait till I tell everybody about Matt Dillon. I always lost his nerve. Get out, I said. Well, I don't want to shoot down a man that won't draw. Not today, anyway. But I'll be back, Marshal. Next week. Why didn't you shoot him, Mr. Dillon? He's nothing but a big bluff. Just so you go on to breakfast, I'm going back to the office. What? Why, well, you told me... You I heard me! Whoa. Well, yes, sir. Okay, Mr. Dillon. I brought you a can full of coffee, Mr. Dillon. Thanks, Chester. I'm gonna put it right here. What you doing, writing a letter? It's a telegram. Here, Chester. Take us down to the depot, will you? Sure. I wanted to go out right away. U.S. War Department. What are you telegraphing Washington about? That's my resignation, Chester. What? I'm quitting right now. Why, you can't do that. I've done it. Oh, I don't believe it's your funny. A man can quit a job, Chester. I've quit jobs before. Well, I know, but this is different. What's different about it? The government doesn't own me. But think what'll happen if you ain't marshal. Here. There are other men can be marshal. Mr. Dillon. What? You ain't doing this because of, well, what Joe Stanger said. That I've lost my nerve? No, he's wrong about that. And he's wrong about my liking to kill men, too. You've never killed nobody unless you had to. And now I don't have to. I'm through, Chester. And I knew I was through when I didn't draw on Stagger this morning. I've killed my last man. I just don't know what to say, Mr. Young. I've hated this job since that day I took it. I never did have a taste for killing, and now they can find somebody who has. Yeah, you'll make a better marshal than I ever was. That ain't true. Go send the telegram, Chester. I'll be at Delmonico's having breakfast. And with a good appetite for a change. <laughs> After breakfast, I went to my room and got some of the sleep I'd missed the night before. And I slept good. It was as though what was past was past. And none of it bothered me now. I didn't have to face it happening over and over again. And when I woke up, I felt better than I had in years. 
I even felt a little cleaner somehow. There wasn't going to be any more blood on my hands. Washington, as usual, was pretty slow answering my telegram. A week later, I still hadn't had an answer. But I didn't care. I'd quit. And that was that. I even began to enjoy myself for a change. Like the day I finally took Kitty fishing. Matt? Hey, Matt, look, I got another one. Uh, well, throw him back, Kitty. We got more than we can carry now. I will not throw him back. I'll steal you. <laughs> Come on over here in the shade. You've done enough fishing. Okay. Hey, look at him, Matt. Isn't he a beauty? Yeah, he's bigger than any I caught. Why don't you throw him in the sack and then sit out here, huh? Say, you're right. I didn't know we'd caught that many. Yeah. Maybe we'll have a fish fry tonight, huh? Well, we can feed half a dodge with all those. <laughs> well, I doubt it. You ever see Chester go through a mess full of fish? <laughs> the last time he starved himself a couple of days in advance. Maybe we can kind of sneak up on him tonight. Ah, uh, no. He knows we're out here. Maybe you ought to go into the business, Matt. No? Uh -huh. What business? Fishing. You could do it for a living. <laughs> Well, I am going to have to find something to do for a living, I guess. Well, it won't hurt you to loaf for a while, man. Yeah. I'm enjoying it. You know something, Matt? What? I think this is the first time I've ever seen you that you weren't wearing a gun. It is. And I'm enjoying that, too. Someday, maybe nobody will wear guns. Yeah, maybe. <sighs> you know something, I'm sleepy. <laughs> you're lazy. So lazy, you're probably going to starve to death before you find a new job. I don't care. <laughs> Matt, look, somebody's coming on the horseback. No? Uh-huh. Hi. Uh, well, that's Chester. Oh, he's as lazy as you are. Imagine taking a horse to come this far. Oh, Chester hates walking. And besides, he looks like he's in a hurry. Oh, maybe he couldn't wait for that fish fry. Mr. Dillon, Oh, Miss Kitty. Look in that sack, Chester. We got about 30 catfish already. Well, that's fine, Miss Kitty, but Mr. Dillon, Joe Stanger's in town. Oh? Well, it doesn't matter to me, Chester. But you don't understand. Understand what? What I come to tell you, Stanger's at the Alpaganza. A while ago, he had words with one of the girls there, and she slapped him, and he pulled out his gun, and he killed her. What? Who was the girl, Chester? Kate Hawkins. Oh, no. That's who it was, Miss Kitty. And then the bartender tried to stop him, and Stanger shot him, too. And I hear he's going to die. I grabbed a horse off the hitch rail and come right down to tell you, you've got to stop him, Miss Milne. I'm not Marshal anymore here, Chester. I quit. No, oh, that don't matter. It does to me. You mean you're going to let Joe Stanger walk around Dodge and shoot everybody that gets in his way, including women? I'm through killing. I told you that. Who's going to stop him, then? You're the only man around here that'll go up against him, and you'll know it. That may be true. But I'm still not going to do it. Wait, Mr. Dillon. Wait a minute, I... I've been thinking a lot about all this lately, and there's something you've been overlooking. Oh? Men like Stanger and Grand, they got to be stopped. I'd do it if I could, but I can't. I ain't good enough. Most men eat. But you are. It's kind of too bad for you that you are, but that's the way it is. And there's nothing you can do about it. Not now. It's too late. It's way too late. Give me your garden, Chester. Yes, Chester. I'll carry it in my belt. Oh, Kitty. Chester will help you carry the fish back. 
Sure, Matt. Sure. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Ray Kemper. Featured in the cast were John Daner and Lawrence Dobkin. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. <laughs>